we were actually in the same recording studio as him, uh, just down the hall. So we were like, hey, knocked on the door and said, you want to sing this right now? And he's like, yeah, sure. So it was, this was very easy. Oh, congratulations, by the way. I've just been listening right the way through um, Memory Lane, the album. And I yeah. um, love some of the tracks on there. But you're the right man. I, I wanted to delve in a little bit, so I couldn't think of anybody better to do that with. Um, first things first, obviously, we had Memory Lane, the EP. Right. And then you guys decided to extend that and then make it an 18-track um, album. So what was the thinking there? Was it, was it like, at one point, maybe you were going to do a separate album with the new tracks, or was it always intended to add on? All of that sort of was in the conversation. Um, you know, when it first started, we thought, well, we have to start making whatever's next. So let's go in the studio and start recording. And we went to Key West, Florida, and we recorded a handful of songs. And then we recorded a few more in Nashville. And then it became, you know, it became obvious that we have this opportunity to release music in a different way. So we can just, when it's ready, we can put it out. And we don't really have to have a plan. So we just thought, well, we have some songs we love. Let's put them out while we're continuing to work and whatever happens happens so at one point in time we did think maybe this is two albums and then we finally just decided you know what let's just tack it all on on one and make it one big project does it matter to an artist like you guys um where you're actually recording or once you close the doors to the recording studio is that it so in other words whether you're in the middle of a city or you're by the beach does that give you a different vibe at all Sure, it it absolutely does, especially in the in this sort of studio that we were in because we we were actually in Jimmy Buffett's studio, and oh, you know it's it's kind of surrounded. You know, you're surrounded by his, um, you know, all of his memorabilia, and it's kind of like a little time capsule when you walk in there. So, um, it was in you know his whole crew and everybody runs it, so it's like you kind of can't help but be immersed in this Jimmy Buffett lifestyle and, you know, it takes the pressure off a little bit and you're, you're relaxed and it really set the tone for the entire album. That must, I mean, obviously with the very sad news we got about Jimmy recently, um, that, that must give almost an extra, I don't know, emphasis for you or, or some, it, it puts another layer on the album process for you guys as well, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. You know, obviously losing him was was a tough loss for everyone. And we didn't really get to work hand in hand with him, uh, even though we had plans to. Um, uh, but, you know, obviously things took a turn for him. So um, but yeah, it's very we feel very honored and that we got to go in there and sort of experience that. You got a couple of collaborations on this album and I'm always fascinated to know you know how does that come about why that artist and is it, is it something that's always ticking around in the background or do opportunities just burst on the scene like just there and then or i'm thinking of megan maroney especially because she's a relatively new artist really making an impact now right and um, so so why megan and um great song by the way that's out but, but how does that work yeah it can happen both ways this one in particular uh had sort of been around we we had this song we've had it for a number of years three years probably um and we knew it was going to be a duet we knew we we wanted it was a powerful song we knew we wanted to record it with the right person we just didn't know who that was and so we just kind of sat on it you know talked about different ideas from time to time and you know for various reasons did not choose anyone else and then when Megan burst onto the scene, you know, with such an incredible song and such an incredible voice and such really a vision for herself as an artist at a very early stage in her career. That's really admirable of, of her. So we, we really loved that. We really responded to that. So we thought, well, this seems like this could be a really good person, you know, to, to be on this. So uh, it was just a matter then of shooting it over to her and see if she liked it. And then, of course, from a marketing point of view, there's a whole new um, maybe fan base as well. And it's a, it's a yeah. diff slightly different market. And um, and then the other extreme, if you like, if you, if you wanted to call it an extreme, would from Megan, would be Blake. You know, the, the very well-established artist everybody knows for, for decades. Um, how did that come about? That one was sort of the opposite. That one did just sort of fall in our laps because, you know, you cross paths with, 
people like Blake all the time and, uh, you know, you're cordial to each other. You, you have a laugh and, you know, he just kept saying like, you guys are my favorite band. I love you guys. And then finally one day he was like, look, I, what do I got to do? I want to sing with you guys. What's, how do we make that happen? So in this album process, we just sent him a handful of songs and just said, you know, we think these would be good, but anything you want to re record with us, you just let us know. So he chose, ain't got to worry in the world. And, and uh, yeah, it was just, then the next time we saw him, we were actually in the same recording studio as him, uh, just down the hall. So we were like, hey, knocked on the door and said, you want to sing this right now? And he's like, yeah, sure. So it just was very easy. As long as it works, yeah. right? That's, that's exactly. the key. Can I ask you as well, and maybe you're too close to it, maybe it changes all the time. Do you have a favorite track from Memory Lane, the album? Oh, gosh, it does change from from time to time. It, it It is really tough to pick, obviously. It's like choosing a favorite kid. But, I mean, you know, obviously Memory Lane is special because it's become such a huge hit. You know, it's fun to play that in the live show, but I can't wait to kind of get some other ones out there, like maybe Beautiful Sky or, you know, I love... Um, a song called different about you which is really energetic and really fun like kind of 90s rock nod and you know we, we sort of have all of it on there and of course m moods are going to change and you like you say favorites are going to change the, the one that jumped off um for what it's worth the one that jumped out of me after um listening through the album was both sides of the bed but yes. you know um i'm i'm going to give it another listen the album that is and then it'll probably be a different one of them um sure uh, I, I, I've mentioned you guys a number, well, so many times on the show, but the fact that you super serve your audience, your 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 uh, your fan base too. I mean, you do, you do these amazing pop up shows. You surprise them. You give them access to you because it's one thing seeing a band if you're out touring with Kenny Chesney or you're doing your own No Bad Vibes tour, and these are massive auditoriums, right, and massive stadiums. But it's it's another thing, the intimate and. What I'm talking about that, do you have a favorite or is it just two completely different types of concerts for you? There's a lot of similarities and there are obviously a lot of differences with the size, but we've sort of tried to to merge the two. You know, uh, even though we're playing um, these giant arenas now, we have learned that our fans really love that kind of access about us and, and, they, and we're fortunate enough to have so much material now that they all dig into that we can't possibly put into, you know, we can't play at all. So we have worked in sort of a, a couple of sections in our set list where we take requests from our fans because that sort of brings that little small club feel into an arena where we can have an interaction with our fans and say, okay, what do you want to hear? And they start yelling songs, they bring signs and we go, okay, let's give it a shot. So we just, turn it over to them for a little while and it kind of brings that arena into a much more intimate space. That really makes sense. Actually. Yeah, you're right. Because then you're conquering that, that thing about the intimacy, but in the, in the biggest space, if you like. Um, yeah. Oh, well, that's fantastic. Listen, I want to wish the very best with memory lane, the album. And I'm looking forward to at some point seeing you guys again. So I really appreciate that. Thank you very much, Matthew. Absolutely. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you sooner than later.